Welcome to Silverlight and Windows Phone 7. My name is Bill Loden, and in the next few minutes, we'll take a look at how Microsoft Silverlight has become a development platform for creating Windows Phone applications. First, a quick review. Silverlight is one of two frameworks for building apps for Windows Phone. The other, Microsoft XNA, is perfect for building 2D and 3D games, but doesn't allow the rapid development cycle that Silverlight does. In this session, we'll focus on Silverlight, but if you're interested in XNA, you can find more information in a separate 7 and 7 video. Silverlight for Windows Phone is based on Silverlight 3. Now, this isn't a watered down, light version of Silverlight. It's the same runtime, the same base class libraries that you get on the desktop with Silverlight 3. Microsoft has made significant performance modifications to ensure that Silverlight applications run fast and smooth on Windows Phone. And of course, they've made some tweaks to integrate the framework with the hardware and the operating system. There's also a set of managed APIs for accessing the accelerometer, GPS, phone functionality, etc. Finally, on Windows Phone, Silverlight works using the same out-of-browser model first introduced in Silverlight 3. At initial release, in-browser Silverlight is not supported, although that is likely to be added in the future. After you install the Windows Phone developer tools, you'll find that Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone ships with three Silverlight templates for developing phone applications. The Windows Phone application is your basic starting point. Choosing this gives you a single page with no controls other than a text block to display the application's title. Now, since many phone applications require some type of scrollable list, Microsoft has provided a template for a Windows Phone list application. This includes a touch-enabled scrollable list that can be customized to suit the needs of your specific application. Finally, and as you can probably guess, the Windows Phone class library is a good solution if you're building components for reuse across multiple Windows Phone applications. Let's take a look at the components we'd see if we were to select the basic Windows Phone application template. As you can see, most of the references are what you'd expect in a Silverlight project with the exception of two phone-specific namespaces. The only namespace you'll find in a browser-hosted Silverlight solution that you won't see in Windows Phone is system.windows.browser, which makes sense because remember, at this point, in-browser Silverlight is not supported. App.xaml declares the application's root visual and is the location you typically store shared resources, such as brushes, templates, and styles. This is exactly the same as you'd find in a desktop or browser-based Silverlight project. And finally, mainpage.xaml is the default root visual, just like in a Silverlight application that you might be familiar with. And just like a Silverlight navigation application, you can add additional pages as necessary to define the different views your users will see. Another way in which Silverlight for Windows Phone differs from the browser-based version is in its navigation behavior. To understand this, we have to revisit the way that traditional browser-hosted Silverlight applications work. You begin with your application, which starts with a root visual of type user control. Then you add content to this user control, and the user interacts with this content. But let's say you add additional content, perhaps swapping it in and out of the user control to represent different parts of your application. Well, your user might decide they want to move to a previous view, and they might use the browser's back button to do it. Unfortunately, this is going to result in the browser reloading the previous web page and the Silverlight application, all of its current state, etc., will be torn down and discarded. And this is definitely not a desirable user experience. So with Silverlight 3, Microsoft introduced the notion of a navigation application. The basic architecture is the same, except the root user control contains a frame which you can interact with programmatically to move between distinct application pages. Most importantly, the behavior of the back button is overridden so that clicking on it navigates back one page within the Silverlight application, and this probably is closer to what the user expects. So the ideas of pages and navigation are good ones, and Microsoft has made it the default framework for Silverlight on Windows Phone. Now, without the need to protect legacy code, they were able to discard the user control and make the frame itself 
the root visual. So it's a simple, straightforward, intuitive way to build navigable applications. And yes, it integrates just fine with the hardware back button that you'll find on each and every Windows phone. Now, one more thing before a quick demo. When you create a new Silverlight for Windows Phone project, you'll find a set of Windows Phone controls that match the simple, clean look and feel of the Windows Phone UI. Now, in fact, these controls are the exact same controls that you're familiar with if you're a Silverlight developer. If you're curious, take a look at the app.xaml file. This is where all the styles are defined, which create the distinctive look of Windows Phone controls. Let's take a look at a quick example. I'll create a new project based on the basic Windows Phone application template. Now you can see I've got a design surface, and this is an interactive design surface. So I can select a text block and change the properties, like the text property. And Silverlight's always been about media, so I'll go ahead and add a media element, and then I'll go grab a video that I can add right to the project, and then I'll just add that video as the source property hit F5 or click the debug button and shortly we should see the application. And just that quickly we've got a Silverlight app running video in Windows Phone 7. As always, thank you for your time and don't forget to be on the lookout for additional 7 and 7 videos where you can find out more about Windows Phone 7.